Hello, Dave from Retire Time Productions here, and I'm going to do a little video on how to laminate the bottom of this dragonfly seaplane. Okay, so we're going to put some lamination on the bottom to protect the hull. The hull is just foam. There's no like uh, vinyl or anything on this. It's just foam and it's painted, so it's subject to being scraped up and damage. So what we're going to do is put some of this lamination film on there. Now this is 1.7 mil lamination. That's mil, not millimeters. This is a mil spec. So it's 1.7 mil. And I got this from Aloft Hobbies at the time. You can also get it in big rolls like from Amazon. If you just search on there for lamination film you can get large rolls of it. Okay, so we've got that and you will need an iron like this. This is a Hanger 9 lamination iron that's used for monocoat and other purposes. Works good for lamination film. The reason they call it lamination film is because it's often used to laminate the back and front, the back and bottom of signs and documents and things like that and it's used like at Office Depot and their machines to laminate things so that's what it is in addition to that you will need some scissors and I'll show you why of course obviously you gotta cut off a piece but there's more to it than that you also have to trim it around the corners and things so you need scissors Knife really, uh, really doesn't do the job, but if I have to use a knife, I'll probably use an X-Acto blade. All right, so let's get started. Without further ado, I'm going to flip it over. Now, I've got another camera view that I'll show you coming up now. Okay, so you can see the bottom of the hull right here. Let me check to make sure that camera is aimed where it's supposed to be. Yeah, that looks okay. Okay, I just made sure the camera was aimed where it was supposed to be, this camera on the side here. Uh, so now, so I've cut a piece of film here, and this is straight off the roll. This is the regular width right here that's on the roll, and then you just cut it to length. So I've cut it to length, so that it will basically go from the step right here on the plane just beyond the nose. And then I'm going to center it up. So I'll just pull it so it's centered. Now what I try to do is find the place that you can do the first bit of lamination without having to trim it. And it looks like I don't need to trim it going around the corners anywhere in there. I think I can make it work. But let's start down the bottom. What we'll do is we'll take our iron. I'll get this out of the way. So we'll take the iron and first of all we just want to line in the middle. And this can hang a little bit over the step. We can trim that off later. But let's just line the middle of this. Might have to pull it tight to make sure. Okay, we'll just get the center line first. And that'll hold it in place. Okay, now let's start working out to the outside edge. You can see how I'm doing that. Of course, I didn't tell you that um, Make sure that the sticky side goes down. There's a shiny side and a dull side. Make sure the dull side is towards the surface that you're applying it to. And this could be various surfaces. It doesn't have to be a plane. Lamination film is really made for other purposes. But we're using it for RC here. Now if you see a wrinkle like that come up, you can just pull it tight and reapply. 
And if you really see some big wrinkles that you can't do anything about, I don't have any yet, but if you have some you can't do anything about, that probably means you need to use your scissors because you're going around a bend where the lamination film can't lay flat. But right now it's doing pretty good. Obviously I'm trying to get it as smooth as I can. Another thing you may need later is a, a sewing needle or pin to pop any bubbles that come up. So far I'm not really seeing any bubbles, but it happens. And then you can pop them and iron them down. It doesn't hurt anything to pop the bubbles and just iron it down afterward. Okay, you can see it's starting to come together there. And you can see there's some bubbles in there. But it takes time. We'll just work them out. Just take your time. You can move to the outside to get the air out. Really, this is just to protect the the finish and the foam so it doesn't have to be perfect but it does have to be glued down good enough so it won't tear off okay so that, that's one side now we're going to start working the other side I haven't done the nose yet so because that may take some trimming okay again just working to the outside I'm not trying to get it perfect the first time just working it to the outside. See, the tendency is to try to start at one end and then work your way down. That doesn't really work. That's why I had to put that center line to make sure it stays in place. Okay. Nothing hard. Just like ironing a shirt. Now if you ever stick the iron to the other surface, to the uh, dull surface, then you're going to have to clean the iron on a rag. Just rub it on a rag till you get the glue off. And that happens. You can use a rag or a paper towel. I happen to have a paper towel right here. If anything goes wrong, I'll use that paper towel to clean the iron. All right, so we've got a little bubble right there. I think I've got it out. Well, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to pull it back here a little bit. Okay, now we've got the nose. Let's see, can I get that down? So far, it's looking pretty good. See, I'm worried I might get a big wrinkle because I am going around a curved surface. All right, so that looks pretty good apparently their mold the way they did it was pretty much flat this is a little upturn at the end but it's not out of the plane that I'm working in so I'm okay so I'll just keep going try to get it down as much as possible yeah that's looking pretty good Now you will see some of the little dents from the uh, cells in the foam. They look like little bumps. That's normal. Foam isn't perfectly flat. There are little bumps from the beads that were in the mold. So don't worry about that. I don't know what's going on there. It's like we had a little power failure. But it didn't affect the lighting, so as long as it doesn't affect the lighting, we're okay. All right. Yeah, recently I bought a uh, Genrac generator just because I was worried about power failures. And in today's political climate, you never know what kind of destruction might happen. So I went ahead and got that. We also have hurricanes coming through. But that's just a side note. So hopefully if the power does go off, we can just keep on going. Because that generator will kick in. So, all right, so there it is. Let me see if you can see that. 
So I've got it down pretty flat on the hull. Now the trick is we've got to bend it around the edges. Now, I don't want to get that iron anywhere near that plastic. If I get the iron near the lamination fill, it's liable to start to curl up or stick to the iron, which is even worse. Okay, now we've got to judge how far. Now, we don't need to go all the way over the wing. I'm not going to do the wing. I'm just doing the hull. We don't want to make it too heavy. So now I'm going to need to trim it a little bit. So let's see, right about there. I don't want to go all the way down to the wing. I just want to come along here. And we can go ahead and make a little slit. Let's see where we got here. Yeah, it's going to start to curve around the profile of the nose. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a slit right there. Okay. And then I'm going to go across this way. Now you don't have to remember every single detail. It's just kind of a free form thing where you... See, now that's going to layer like that. Is it going to go all the way down over the wing? No, I don't care. I'm just trying to put a little bit of strength into the hull and protect it against scrapes. So now I can go ahead and just start to tack that down. I'll just do that. That gives you the idea. All right. Now I want to pull it straight as much as I can. Just pulling it down straight. Using my thumb to just hold it down while I put the heat to it. And there it is. Yeah, it's hot so you don't want to touch your finger. I almost did, but I saw it coming. So now we've got to be careful we don't touch this with the iron, so I'll just fold this back out of the way so that we can do this piece. And you can see right there a little bit of the uh, paint got on the tip of the iron, so I'm just rubbing it off on the towel, paper towel. All right. All right, so that's pretty good. We can come back and clean it up later, but you know, that's the basic idea. Now it's going to start curving around the nose. Now I'd like to protect that decal, so I think what I'll do is cut it along here, and this is the inner part of the nose here. I don't think I'm going to do all of that. I think I'm, what I'm going to do is just bring it down and go right in this area all right and back up let's go back up this way I'm just trying to protect the nose a little bit I don't know if you can see that but I went and cut this curve like that now we've got to do more than that because you can see as I lay this flat that, see how it wrinkles up right there? So that means we can't make it around the curve and keep a continuous piece. So we're going to have to cut it right there and then fold that out of the way. And you just keep doing that as you go around the curve. Now if that's still not enough, if you don't think you can lay it flat, it doesn't look like it, so let's give it another cut. Let's give it a cut right there. Now let's judge about which side overlaps. All right. So it looks like this side is overlapping over that. So that's good. So we'll fold that out of the way and we'll lay this one down. Okay. So we'll just lay that flat, moving the iron away from the edge like that. Okay, now we can lay this one down over it. And we'll go down along with that. 
Just going to make sure that it's laying flat, holding it with my fingers. And it's always harder to do these things on camera than it is by yourself with no camera. So I'm liable to make more mistakes doing it on camera than I would off camera. That's why I like those things that, well, it always works good at home when no one's looking. Well, that's part of the reason because when you're trying to show somebody, you're in a different position trying to show them the view than you are when you're doing it by yourself. So anyway, I got that on there. Now, if you don't mind, I'm going to sit down a second so I can take a closer look. Looks like I'm going to have to go around this corner here. So, yeah, it's going to have to be cut again. I'm going to go ahead and just tack this down. But that's pretty good. Now, we've got a lot of places we're going to have to cut. We want this to go around the edge, but we don't need this much. So I'm going to cut that off. And keep it away from the iron at all costs. That lays on the iron. We've got a big cleanup job to do. I hope you can see this. Yeah, I believe you can. I was just checking to make sure it was in the camera. Because I never know. I tell you what, I'm going to turn this display around so maybe I can see better what I'm doing. Okay. Yeah. All right. So now let's make us another slit and see where I'm going with this. So that piece will lay there. Then this one will go over it like that. And that's what you do is you go around the curve. And you can see I'm going to need to do it again, so we might as well do it again. Just keep doing it. All right. I think three might be enough. Sometimes it's hard to tell. I'll just do this. And we'll fasten that down. All right, it's looking good so far. So I think you can see what the plan is here. The plan is just to slowly cut it and bend it around the corner. Of course, the nose is one of the most sensitive places you know, if you run into anything and you damage the nose, the good thing about this lamination is sometimes the nose might get crushed, but you can iron it back out. The lamination tends to, the heat or whatever from the iron and the lamination tends to expand the bubbles back, the foam cells back out and fill in the gaps and actually straighten it back out. So sometimes you can actually do the repair without taking it, the pieces back apart. They'll actually just expand back if it's not too bad of a damage. So that's another reason to laminate. Okay, so that side there is getting good. And uh, like I said, we can come back and do more of this later, but looks... So maybe it's not perfect right here, but I can come back later and and clean it up. So I'm going to make another cut right there and put these two. So it looks like these. this one is going to overlay over these two. It's a little bit of uh, just planning, but it's not hard. I mean, you could anybody could really do it once you practice it. You can always get a piece of foam or a junk plane and practice on that. Now, you see right here, it looks kind of whitish. If I go ahead and start to iron that down, you'll see that black start to come through as that glue adheres to the paint. 
And once you get done, you won't even be able to tell there was any lamination there. It'll just be shiny. It makes it look shiny, but it doesn't hide the coloring. Now I'm going back over some of that other because I can see it better. Okay, so just do that. Now I won't go around here because I don't want to touch my iron to the other side where the paint is. But that's halfway right there. Now I'll just go ahead and cut this loose because that's working the other side like that. Okay, so now we're going to be totally working on the other side. This side is pretty much done. I'll just make sure I don't touch the paint or the decals. Just make sure that piece is laying down. So I got this piece here, um, this piece right here laying down, the pieces that were sticking out. And now this other side will go over the top of it right here. Okay, just lap over it. Okay, so that's that side. Now we gotta move to the other side. Okay, we're on the other side. Can you see it? I think you can. Yeah, pretty close. Okay. Again, I'm going to have to stretch out because I'm on camera and normally I would pull it near myself where I could see better, but for you, I'm going to put it a little bit further away out of my reach. Okay, so we can make a plan here. Now one thing you could do is you could take a magic marker and mark where you want to cut it, but Normally I don't do that. I just eyeball it. But if you want to make it easier, you could do that. So I already know from the other side I had to cut a slit right here. Right like that. So I just did that ahead of time. And then we know we've got to cut along here. And see how you sometimes you can just run the scissors along like that and it'll cut it. Okay, remember I'm not trying to go all the way to the wing. I'm just getting it over that edge. Okay, now we're going to start to lay that down flat. Trying to stay away from touching any of the paint with the iron. You can look at the iron, see if there's any paint, and if there is, you can just rub it on the paper towel or cloth, whatever you got to remove it. It will come off. Okay, so that's pretty good. That's laid down. It's not perfect, but right. like I said, we're not looking for perfect right now. We're just trying to get it tacked down, and then later we can come back. Okay, so we wanted to protect this decal and some of the cockpit right here. We want to get up to the edge of the cockpit right in here. And so I need to come around. Let's just come around on the and curl it this way. See how we're doing. That's pretty good. Just like that. Now, you can see how that is. That's probably going to be okay there. I do see a little wrinkle here, so we'll start by we'll start by uh, lapping this section over the old the previous one so I'm just gonna lap that now we can see here that there is going to be a wrinkle no doubt about it so let's go ahead and cut that and so that can lay flat and then this will go over it later all right we'll fold that out of the way this is just the same procedure we did on the other side no extra thinking if you've done one side, you can do the other. Okay, we'll just lay that down. Again, not touching this paint or the decal with the tip. I'm just, I'm not doing a nice smooth action because I don't want to run into the paint. We can do that later, smooth it out later. All right, now we got that. Now we'll bring the next lap. Again, there's going to be a wrinkle, so where's it going to be? It looks like right here. So let's just go ahead and we'll cut that. 
Not an exact science. It may not be in the same place the other side was, but it uh, should still work. Just use your eyeballs. Calibrated eyeballs. Sometimes the eyeball will tell you more than you think. All right, so do you see how that curved right around there? And now it's over that decal, so there's no way that decal is going to be damaged. It's underneath. It isn't going anywhere ever. Okay, now, the next thing is to do this piece, and now we're going to have to start shortening our laps because, let's see where this is going. Okay, it's got overlap over there. So let's cut off this corner and see how that laps over. That's good. Now we need to make us another cut up this way. I hope you can see this. I'm just trying to look at the camera and see if I am in view. All right, peeling that back. And that's lapping over the previous one. And the laps are going in the right direction. That's purely accidental. But as the wind blows over it, it won't peel up the lap behind it because of the direction that I put it. But it uh, wasn't very well planned. It just comes out that way because of the curve. The curve of the fuselage kind of makes it so you have to go that direction. Okay, it just went around the edge there. Okay, now we're going to come down with this one. Now obviously we're going to need another cut because this is going to wrinkle up. So let's just make us a cut. Kind of splitting the difference. All right, that's great because I have enough where I can get this to go around the bend or around the curvature and still have enough to tack it down over the top of the, the uh, left-hand side one. All right, now we'll bring this one in. And at this point, I think I'm just going to commit and just put that down. Uh, we can make one little last cut there if we want, but I don't think it's necessary. It looks, it, it might be a little crinkly, but I don't think it's a big deal. All right. I'm going to flip it over. There we go. Hope you can see that. I got to pick up the scissors, but while I do, I'll just tilt this camera down just a tad. There we go. All right. All right, now we're going to finish it up. So you can kind of see how all that proceeded. It wasn't a, really that hard. You didn't hear me grunting and groaning. I wasn't putting a lot of effort into it. It's kind of like just ironing a shirt or maybe eating a bowl of cereal. You just start at it, and before you know it, it's all done. It's just a matter of concentration. And actually, it's kind of relaxing just sitting there doing it. And there it goes. It's kind of like that painting, right? And now we got that happy little nose with that happy little film. Okay, so there we go. Now we can get down to the nitty gritty and just really smooth it. Make sure everything's down tight. And there we have the incredible hull.
An incredible laminated hull. I can see better now because uh, I don't think you can, but I can see better. But there we go. I'll bring it in here a little closer. Okay, so I'm getting the bubbles that were left over out of here. Well, that's a pretty smooth looking hull, though. But there is one bubble right here. I don't know if you can see that, but what I do now, like I said earlier, was if you have a bubble that won't smooth out, you can take a pin, just poke a hole in it, and then as you iron it, the air will come out and it'll go right down flat. So any places you see that and it won't adhere because of that air under there, you can put one or two little holes and then just smooth it out. And you just keep doing that. Now, are we worried about water leaking through it? No, we're not worried about any water leaking through it because this isn't waterproofing. This is just covering the foam to protect it. The foam's waterproof anyway, so. Now I've got a bunch of bubbles along this edge. Uh, I'm just popping some holes in those to get that to lay flat. Because we want to have these little defined ridges on this that make it track through the water. We don't want to take out the contour of the hull because it is important for it to track through the water. And of course the step is important because we got to get up on step in order to, in order to uh, lift off. So we got to make sure we have a defined step. All right, so you can see how I'm just taking out those any bubbles that are there. And I mean, you can come back days later, even next year and iron out a bubble. It's not something you have to do be in a hurry to do. And now the step right here, there's a little piece that right there. Now you could either tack it down or just cut it off. It's up to you. Um, I think I'm going to try to cut some of it off. The step is one of the most important parts of a float plane because you got to got to be able to lift off the water and if you don't have a step either on the pontoons or on the hull like this you won't be able to break the surface of the water so there we go all right so that's that's it now i can go through and and do some more later but I think it would make the video too long. So let's just stop on the hull there. It's pretty much done, I think. So the hull's pretty much done. There's a little here that I'm gonna have to deal with. I'll trim that off um, later. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Now, as a finishing touch, a lot of times the wing edges will get dinged up, either hanger rash or just uh, running into reeds or something in the water or a tree limb so it can't hurt to just put a little bit of uh, material on that that one's a little short let's see here's one that i cut off earlier now that's good and long so let's just go ahead and put that on so that'll protect our decals as well as uh, protect the edge of the wing and again just work away from the edge Just doing that and tacking down the edge first and then working away from it. No biggie. And you can see how the black is coming back in there. Okay. And now we can flip it over. And we'll just drag this around. Let's just get right in the middle here first. Get in the middle and just make a line, okay? 
Now we can do the same thing over here. Make another line, stretch this, make another line, and then we can start filling it in. You can also come around the edge. Just coming around the edge of it here. Like that. And now I can just start to fill it in. Working from the front edge, working from the leading edge, just pushing backward to stretch that lamination film out. Trying to stay away from the paint. Now you could laminate the whole wing, but I think that would start to add too much weight. So I wouldn't recommend it. I mean, you can't totally protect the plane, but you certainly can get the parts that take the most beating. And that's what I'm doing. Just trying to protect the wing edge and the hull, okay? I'm not gonna do any of the control surfaces or anything like that. This is just some things you can't protect against, like pilot error. Yeah, pilot error, there's no protection against that except practice. If you haven't flown before, I highly recommend 100% get on a simulator. Put in a couple hundred hours on a simulator before you go out and waste a bunch of money on an aircraft. Because these foam planes, they don't take a lot of uh, hits. Like, say, a mini quad, you can run into stuff with it and just break a prop or something. These, you're going to end up with a debris field. So you definitely want to know what you're doing. You want to practice up. And uh, at least get the part down where you understand or almost have a second nature that when the plane turns around and heads towards you that you're going to move the aileron stick the other way because that's the part, the orientation of, of the reaction. In other words, you, your mind wants you to move the stick the wrong way when it comes towards you. You have to overcome that, get it into your muscle memory before you waste a lot of money on planes. And a simulator is a good way to do that. I used real flight, if anybody wants to know, but there's some cheap ones out there like Phoenix that don't cost hardly anything. It doesn't have to be fancy scenery or anything like that. It's just a matter of when the plane turns and comes towards you, you've got to automatically know what to do. And that's all it is. It's just learning that reflex. It's kind of like riding a bike. At first you can't balance it, but then it becomes second nature and you don't even think about it. That's the point you got to get to. If you have to think about which way to move the stick, it's too late, guys and gals. It's too late. If you have to think which way you're going to move it, it's already in the ground. You can might as well just bury it right there. Unless you're out to get earthworms. All right, so we got it done. I'll do the same thing to the other side. And that's it. I mean, pretty much a, a no-brainer. It's just ironing. I know, men hate ironing. I'd rather have my wife do it, but Sometimes we just have to buckle down and do it. What if you're single? Maybe some of you are single. Or maybe your wife's pissed off at you and she won't do the chores anymore. Maybe she thinks you're a chauvinist pig. So let's just make sure that we take our time, do it properly, don't rush it. You saw it didn't take that long. And I'm done. I just got to put one piece over here, but I can do that. You saw that was easy. Okay, I don't know what else I can tell you. Lamination is not hard. And 1.7 mil gives you 
your best bang for the buck because it's got enough strength to protect the plane, but not so heavy that it'll add extra weight. So that's what I would recommend. There's also a three mil version of this, which you could use on the bottom of something like this if you wanted to. It's a little bit stronger, but then again, you could just put another layer of this on. So I don't see a sense of buying the three as well. Just get the 1.7. Double it up if you need more strength, for example. But uh, that's it. I've got a few scraps here. Probably only worth a couple of pennies. Because this stuff isn't that expensive. I've got whole rolls of it for... Well, I've got enough to last me more than my lifetime back there for $60. It's like two huge rolls that I got off Amazon. This stuff here I got from a loft hobby. Same stuff. Okay, that's it. This is Dave. Wishing you a great time flying and just have a lot of fun as the summer finishes off because there's not much time left before that snow starts coming in. But uh, thanks for watching and this is Dave signing out.